It's allegations like those, along with Donald Trump's divisive campaign rhetoric, that may be doing long-term damage to his businesses. Already we've seen threats of boycotts of his buildings and his clothing line. Can the master of reinvention make his brand great again? Here's my Nightline co-anchor Byron Pitts in our election countdown series, Inside the Final 30. Posh hotels, luxury condominiums, high-end fashion, and one name in common, Trump. I'm really rich. But now the name that built an empire. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. You gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. I don't remember. Grab him by the Could be what damages it. Head to Bloomberg. Talk about the Trump brand, the dollars and cents of the Trump brand. But after allegations of sexual assault. He was like an octopus. It was like he had six arms. And comments directed towards minority groups, veterans, and the disabled. Uh, I don't know what I said. Is the Trump name an asset or liability? Here we are at Bloomberg to interview Tim O'Brien, executive editor of Bloomberg View. This is Tim O'Brien. Hey. Hey, Tim. Byron Pitts. Hey, Byron. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Has this campaign helped or hurt Donald Trump the brand? He runs a hotel business that depends on people feeling good about being associated with a building with his name on it. Women are turning their backs on him. People of color are turning their backs on him. There's going to be a sort of seismic and permanent impact on his business. It's an impact already in full force. A short ride uptown, a trio of residential buildings with the Trump name are now in an all-out battle to have the brand removed. When you moved in four years ago, were you bothered by the Trump name? No, frankly, I didn't think about it. Now I think it stands for the worst of America. Linda Gottlieb has gathered 542 signatures on the name removal petition. His name is his biggest asset, so what a great way to attack him. Meanwhile, 800 miles west, event planner Beth Bernstein says she booked conferences and weddings at a Trump hotel in Chicago for years. That was until news broke of this now infamous recording. Grab him by the Bernstein wrote in her blog, I simply cannot bring myself to walk in the door any longer. And made a decision to sever her business ties with Trump's hotels. I'll be following this up with a letter to my contact there to take me off of their preferred vendor list. But like him or not, Donald Trump is a titan of industry. When you look at that wonderful skyline, do you say, I own that, 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 that? I'd really like to buy everything if that were possible. <laughs> the man and the brand, inseparable from each other, controversial, sure but iconic as well. The scale, Charlie, is what brings the people, the opulence, the, the size. Casinos. Trump steaks are by far the best tasting, most flavorful beef you've ever had. Steaks. My new game is Trump, the game. Even a board game, not always successful, but daring and different. The Dono constantly reshaping, reinventing. You see why Trump is Trump. Everything is luxury, best of everything. Barreling into the present with The Apprentice, and now a presidential run. Make America great again. And even rumors of his own digital network, Trump TV. We've never had a presidential candidate who's had holdings worldwide. What we don't know is how it could impact his presidency. It's not clear what Donald Trump would do with his business if he became president of the United States. He's talked about putting it into a blind trust. But I would probably have my children run it with my executives and I wouldn't ever be involved. The idea behind a blind trust is that a third party takes over your portfolio so that there are no issues and conflicts of interest. Now, in this case, Trump's portfolio is his business. It's his name. So what happens there? It's unclear. Also unclear how all this impacts his net worth. A total net worth, $8,737,540,000. That number, however, has been disputed, in part because of Trump's refusal to release his tax returns. I think in many circles there's a perception that this campaign has damaged his brand in some way. The brand has been made a lot more personal through the, the course of this campaign. And that's indica you know, indicated by things like Ivanka's clothing line, you know, also being sort of boycotted. That boycott gathering steam on Twitter called Grab Your Wallet, started by Shannon Coulter. You can vote in the voting booth, you can vote at the cash register. Shannon Coulter says her hashtag has been used by more than 125 million people, a movement large enough to have gotten Ivanka Trump's attention. Ivanka, you've got your own business on. I wonder what you say to the women who've started this Grab Your Wallet campaign on Twitter. Well, the beauty of America is people can do what they like. 
but I'd prefer to talk to the millions, tens of millions of American women who are inspired by the brand. Ivanka has condemned her father's comments from that Access Hollywood video, which inspired this campaign. What was the uh, core audience, you think, for the Trump brand? Pre-election. If you think about um, his assets, think about his portfolio, which is largely tied up in property, his target would really be um, people you would consider to, to have a household income of, say, $100,000 or more. Donald Trump is essentially the 1%, and he lives a very rarefied lifestyle. He has products that are luxury brands. They aren't pitched to working-class Americans, but his core base is working class Americans. Tonight, the Trump Organization telling ABC News that the brand, quote, remains incredibly strong and we are seeing tremendous success across business units, adding, we continue to outperform our competitors and are very enthusiastic about their future and our continued growth. So does it speak to how Trump can, no matter what's said or done about him, that he will survive? One of his core strengths is he's a survivor. I've got no doubt that he'll survive this election. What he has done is surfaced some very disturbing trends, issues around race, chauvinism, sexism, but it's out there on the table now being discussed. For Nightline, I'm Byron Pitts in New York.